background, the situation. So it's the ability to figure out what is this person thinking. Um, something that develops out of childhood and something that's um, lacking, so to speak, in certain neurodevelopmental disorders, for example, autism. So what we're trying to figure out um, in this lab is what is it about the brain, what is it about certain brain regions that react or elicit this response, this particular response. Um, so generally what happens is we present subjects with stories, stories that are close to and beliefs. For example, Sarah's getting ready for a party. Uh, she puts her shoes underneath her dress and then she goes out shopping. So in her mind, we know that Sarah thinks the shoes are underneath the dress. But her sister comes in and moves her shoes and puts them underneath the bed. So now, Sarah's beliefs are false and reality is different. Uh, we use this contrast to try to see what brain regions are responsible for this ability to think in this way. So we contrast that with what we call the photograph position, where, for example, you have a house with red walls, that's one situation, and then the walls are painted purple. The difference we have what used to be versus what now is. We what kind of contrast we use. So we come up with this, what we call kind of a network of regions that systematically come up with robust um, changes, and those are the, the cortex, the temporal uh, parietal cortex, uh, the PC and the radio cortex. These are regions that are very much involved in social cognition, but nobody's quite sure whether they're specific to disability or they're just really are very general. Um, so the first study was trying to compare whether or not these regions prefer um, stimulus modality. That is, these um, stimuli are generally presented visually. So when you lie down in the MRI machine, you present a text on the screen and you read it and that's how you get the information. Um, but for example, if you want to test blind subjects, they can't see it, so before we read them out, you need to check that these regions, the response that you're going to get is the same no matter how it's presented. And in fact, that's the case. Um, you get the same response independent of how the, the patient heard the subject. So you get the same, basically the same view, and you get overlap and all sorts of great statistical things saying that the same thing is happening no matter how it's presented. And specifically in the regions that are theorized to be responsible for this um, 